Hey everybody! Today we'll be discussing the different ways we can express, or quote, an interest rate. Each method provides different information to an investor. We'll start by comparing the difference between the stated annual percentage rate, or APR, of an investment to its effective annual rate, or EAR. Then we'll look at how APR and EAR can help us evaluate whether a loan is attractive, or even legal. Interest rates are quoted annually. This way, it's easy for investors to compare between investments, as they're always dealing in annual terms. But often, interest is not compounded annually. That's why, up to this point, we've had to divide the annual percentage rate, or APR, by the number of compounding periods in one year to determine the interest rate we should use in our time value of money formulas. For example, I might earn 12% on an investment that is compounded monthly. I would take 12% divided by 12 to determine the interest I earn for each monthly compounding period, which is 1%. But sometimes, instead of APR, we want to know the effective annual rate of interest. That is, an investment's EAR. The effective annual rate tells us what the effective rate of return would have been if interest were compounded only once in the year. We already know that the more frequently interest is compounded, the more quickly an investment grows. So if an investment is compounded more than once per year, the effective annual rate would be higher than its APR, or stated interest rate. EAR tells us what rate, compounded once for the year, would increase the size of our investment by the same amount as if we'd compounded our APR at the given compounding frequency. For example, let's say we earn an 8% return on our $1,000 investment, compounded quarterly. If our investment is compounded quarterly, then our effective quarterly rate is 2% or the 8% APR divided by 4 periods. At the end of the year, our investment would be worth 1,000 times 1 plus 0 0.02 to the power of 4, or $1,082.43. What effective annual rate would have given us this same return? We want our future value in a year to be $1,082.43. Therefore, we can set $1,082.43 equal to 1,000 times 1 plus R to the power of 1, and isolate for R. This tells us what interest rate will cause our $1,000 today, when compounded only once for the year, to have the same future value as if we compounded it quarterly. Dividing by the initial value of 1,000 and subtracting 1 allows us to isolate for R, which is 8.243%. This makes sense, since we earned a return of $82.43 on $1,000. Notice that the APR simply takes our 2% effective quarterly rate and multiplies it by 4, which is the number of compounding periods in a year. This 8% APR is smaller than the EAR of 8.243%, because the APR is not capturing the effect of compounding. The more frequently our investment is compounded, the more we put our money to work, and the more interest on interest we make. When expressed in annual terms, the EAR captures this compounding effect, while the APR does not. You may wonder why we use APR at all, if it doesn't show us the effective return on our investment. APR is easier for investors to understand and compare between investments, since it doesn't change when we change the frequency of compounding periods. But EAR tells us our actual effective return. A general formula for this situation can be derived by isolating for R. We'll take the present value of our investment times 1 plus the annual percentage rate over M, the number of compounding periods in a year, to the power of M and set that equal to the present value of our investment today times 1 plus the effective annual return to the power of 1. On the left we have i over m, where m is the number of compounding periods in a year. This side of the equal sign expresses the value of our investment after one year's worth of compounding. The right hand side represents a situation where we only compound our investment annually. In order for these two sides to be equal, our effective interest rate must be larger than the APR since investments which are compounded more often grow faster than investments compounded less frequently at the same interest rate. Isolating for R, we get 1 plus APR over M to the power of M minus 1 is R. Notice that the initial or present value of our investment isn't relevant here, since it's the same for APR and EAR, and we can eliminate it from our equation. This formula reflects the same logic as the steps we just used to calculate EAR, but it saves us some time. Applying it to the example we just discussed, we get 1 plus 0 0.08 over 4 to the power of 4 minus 1, which equals 8.243%, the same answer we just calculated. 
It's important to note that the effective annual rate of an investment that is compounded annually would be the same as the stated rate, since it's already expressed in annual terms. There are no compounding effects that would change the effective return. In such a situation, M would be 1, so the effective annual rate would equal 1 plus the APR over 1 to the power of 1 minus 1, also known as just the APR. When might we use the EAR over the APR? Each rate can be useful to help us evaluate whether an interest rate is reasonable or even legal. For example, in Canada, lenders can't charge more than 60% APR. One exception is payday loans, which are loans less than $1,500 with terms between two weeks and two months. These loans carry period rates of up to 17%. For a two-week loan, this would make the maximum APR 443%, or 17% times 26, the number of biweekly periods in a year. An effective annual rate is an even more useful indicator to an investor of how much a loan truly costs, as it factors in the increased effective costs as a result of compounding interest. Suppose your friend Linda needs money fast, so she gets an $800 two-week loan from a sketchy-looking man named Sylvester Stallone. She agrees to pay him $50 as interest. Try and pause the video to figure out first the APR and then the EAR of this investment. See if you can decide whether or not this loan would be legal in Canada. Let's go over this together. First, what is the APR? Linda's interest for the period is 50 over 800, or 6.25%. Since there's 26 periods in a year, taking 365 days divided by 14 days per two-week period, the APR on this loan is 625 times 26, or 162.5%. What about the EAR? Applying the formula we used earlier, we'll take 1 plus 0 0.0625 to the power of 26 minus 1 to figure out the effective annualized rate. This is an effective return of 383.7%. Ay, caramba! Notice how much higher the effective rate is than the APR. This is due to both the high compounding frequency and the large APR of this investment. This loan falls within the legal limit of 443% APR, although it still doesn't sound like a great deal. I would ask Linda if she can avoid taking out a loan to cover her until payday. If you've made it this far, you've learned that it's sometimes useful to quote interest rates in effective terms as an EAR, or effective annual rate, rather than as an APR, or annual percentage rate. We learned how to convert an APR into an EAR, and you can use this same formula to convert an EAR into an APR, although you'll see this situation less often. Make sure to tune into our next video where we discuss how to modify this formula slightly to calculate the effective return over a period other than one year. See you next time! Thank you.